Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about iodine, which is a highly contentious topic. Every single time I talk about iodine, there are people who get so angry in the comments. So I'm gonna try and just give you the facts and give you a logical way of looking at this important mineral or element and how and why it's important and how much you should be taking and how to take account for all of the sources inside of your body. So when you look at iodine, there's no question that humans must get it. That is a fact of physiology. We are not able to produce it on our own and we must get it from our diet because we must create thyroid hormone and without thyroid hormone, we will die. End of story. Physiologically speaking, you must obtain iodine somehow. Now what happens though is not, the question isn't about whether or not you need it because anybody who understands physiology will say, yes, you do. The question is how much should you be taking? And that's where you'll get a huge range of opinions from people who are saying completely, don't take any, right? And we'll talk about that in just a second, to people who are saying, let's take hundreds of times, maybe even thousands of times the recommended dose uh, because that will help your thyroid work optimally and that will help you fix the problems that you're dealing with. Now, the truth is somewhere in between and to get there, we have to use a little bit of logic and we'll also use some physiology and then some, some information. So let's talk about that right now. So when you actually look at the amount of the recommended daily allowance that the, the government says we should be getting to prevent a goiter, that is around 150 to 300 micrograms per day. The 150 is for adults and the higher end, it's usually about 270 that they recommend, would be for women who are uh, lactating or women who are pregnant. And that's because, again, they understand physiologically speaking that the developing child needs high doses of iodine for brain development. Children do, who do not have enough iodine end up with a lower IQ because of that developmental issue. So taking high, take, not taking high doses, but taking the right amount of iodine is critical if you are a woman who is lactating or um, if you're pregnant for that reason. There's lots of other reasons to take it, including for thyroid hormone, but that is a, worth mentioning and paying special attention to. So what happens if you don't get enough iodine? Well, we already know that. That story has played out. So let's say you went less than that dose. Well, what ends up happening is you get a goiter, and that's an enlargement of the thyroid gland, and you end up with low thyroid function or hypothyroidism. So that's that's what TF is, is abbreviating here, low thyroid function or hypothyroidism. Again, not a state you want to be in that results in weight gain, hair loss, constipation, slowing down of your body, slowing down of metabolism, reducing the heart rate, etc. You do not want to be in a state of hypothyroidism. Now, on the flip side, here's where all the concern comes back, comes uh, into play. So people will recognize, yes, you need some amount of iodine, but what happens if you get too much? What happens if you go above that 150 and 300 microgram level? Now at some point, and by the way, we don't know how much, and we don't know why this always happens, but if you were to take too much, your risk of certain autoimmune thyroid disease, such as Graves' disease and Hashimoto's, rapidly increases. So when we see populations of, of patients or people who take high doses of iodine, they have an increased risk of Graves and Hashimoto's, which again is not something that you want to develop if you're trying to live a healthy life. So you're kind of in a situation where you must find this Goldilocks zone. Now my recommendation based off of this information is to look for doses that, that are within the 150 to 300 microgram range, knowing that if you go too low, you risk putting, your, putting yourself into hypothyroidism. And if you go too high, you risk putting yourself into an autoimmune thyroid disease condition like Graves or Hashimoto's. Now here's where people get confused. So I'll make these statements. And that's why, by the way, I have some supplements that contain iodine because I believe this is to be the case. I believe physiologically that iodine is necessary. But sometimes I will say, and I'll make comments like, hey, you guys need to be aware of your total iodine intake. And here's why. Iodine is frequently hidden in many different things, and you're probably not aware of these things. So you may inadvertently be getting way more iodine. So for instance, maybe you're taking a 150 to 300 microgram uh, iodine supplement, and, and then I'll come out and I'll say, hey, you guys want, gotta be careful, you might be taking too much, and you're think, thinking, I'm, I'm taking exactly the amount you told me, and that's true, but you're not taking into account, or potentially not taking into account, hidden sources of iodine. 
Now these hidden sources of iodine can be in all sorts of places. So one of the most common is would be in beauty products and cosmetic products. So this is especially important for women. So you might be a woman who's putting on makeup and these, this makeup contains certain ingredients like povidone that contains iodine. And guess where you're putting that? You're putting it around your eyes, you're putting it on your lips, you're putting it on your face. And the tissue around your face is so thin that the transdermal absorption, which means the absorption that you can get through the skin um, on the face is much higher than other places on the body. So you, not only are you putting in a place where it's more highly absorbed, you're also putting a compound that has higher doses of iodine and you're not realizing it. So women are often getting way more iodine than they realize because of beauty products and cosmetics. The next thing is you have to be aware of food. So a lot of people will look only at supplements, but they won't pay attention to food. And food is in, or iodine is in all sorts of foods beyond just the seaweed um, and fish products that everyone thinks about, right? It's actually found in some fruits, it's found in eggs, and it's found in dairy, it's found in deli meats, etc. It's all over the place. So you have to take into account how much you're getting from your diet, which obviously will vary a lot of the time, right? You're not gonna eat the same foods every single day. And then another big, big area that people miss would be prescription medications. So for instance, all thyroid medications contain iodine that can be recycled by the body. So it's not a free floating iodine in the same way that you would get it from beauty products or, or food, but thyroid hormone like level thyroxine contains four iodine compounds on each thyroid hormone. And your body doesn't just eliminate that T4 and throw it away, it recycles that iodine. So every single time you're taking thyroid medication, if you're taking it, you're getting a source of iodine. And also, by the way, some thyroid medications like Armour Thyroid contain free iodine in addition to the iodine that's found on the thyroid hormone inside of the medication. And then lastly, supplements, which is what I just talked about. So yes, if you're not getting it from these sources and you're not getting it from food, then you're gonna have to supplement with supplements because like I said, you have to get it somehow. So here's what ends up happening. As a result, so all the stuff that I've told you is true. You should be focusing on getting the 150 to 300 micrograms per day, but a lot of people are getting much higher than that because of these sources. So they're falling into this, this range where they put themselves at risk for developing Hashimoto's and Graves' disease because they're inadvertently obtaining much more iodine from these other hidden sources than they realize. And that's where you can get into trouble. So when I say, and by the way, this is also why it makes sense sometimes to account for all of this total sources of iodine that you're getting into your body each and every day, because it may make sense at some point, and this is where the iodine avo avoidance diet comes into play, it may make sense to reduce your total iodine intake. And a lot of people, when I say that, they'll be, wait a minute, didn't you just say you have to have iodine? Yes, I did say that, and I still believe that. But the problem is you may have way too much in your body without realizing it. And if that's the case, temporarily, not forever, but temporarily reducing your total exposure to iodine may have a positive impact on thyroid function. So patients who have Hashimoto's and Graves' disease may actually benefit from temporarily reducing their iodine intake for a short period of time so that then their body can metabolize through that extra iodine that's stored inside of their bodies and bring them back to this level. So they're pushing themselves up into that physiologic level. And that's really how I think it's best to think about this iodine situation, both from a logical perspective and from a physiological perspective. Now, if you are somebody who thinks that you might not be getting enough iodine, I would recommend checking out this video next, which talks about the warning signs of iodine deficiency.